Welcome to AI TV. We're broadcasting live from AI Expo Africa 2019, Africa's largest AI trade show. And it gives me a great honor to welcome Karim Bagheer from uh, InstaDeep. He's the CEO and he's one of the leading uh, exponents of deep learning and also involved in the deep learning in Darbo, which is one of the largest academic uh, events in Africa as well, showcasing AI and uh, deep learning across the continent. So welcome, Karim, to the show. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Nick. Pleasure to be here. And also, thank you very much for, for doing the keynote speech today. You did a, a talk about bootstrapping AI in Africa. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Exactly. I mean, uh, bootstrapping, I think, is the key for Africa because, uh, you know, our own history, we started the company in 2014 with just two laptops and $2,000. And yeah. we learned by doing that it's actually possible to get to somewhere interesting. And I think it's the same opportunity for the whole continent. There are exciting things happening now that make it possible for Africa to seize the AI opportunity. So, I mean, that's really interesting. You say you started with, what, uh, two laptops and a couple of thousand dollars, right? And exactly. I guess even, well, that's five years ago. So now the number of things available to a young engineer to start a business must be, what, 10 times, 10 times more things like open source and... Absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I think if you're interested in machine learning and AI, actually it's possible today to, uh, you know, get started. All the information is available online. It's possible also to get free cloud credits. It's possible to yeah. get free advice through uh, deep learning in Daba, for example. I'm a member of the steering committee. That's right. Uh, we are bringing together the whole machine learning community in, in all Africa. We were present in 27 countries That's this right. year. Yep. And so if you are a young talent who's interested in machine learning, it's okay if you don't know everything or you're just starting, you can actually get to somewhere interesting and I believe the opportunities are very big today. So tell us a little bit about InstaDeep, I mean, uh, to tell our audience about what you do for a living, that's your, I mean, uh, deep learning in Darbo is your part-time activity, but full-time you're yes. with, with InstaDeep, T tell us a little bit about your company. Yeah, so and, uh, InstaDeep is one of the fastest AI rising uh, startups in Africa, so uh, we focus on uh, hard problems in machine learning. Uh, we develop and innovate, so we develop our own research where we collaborate with the best and brightest. Uh, we have collaborations ongoing with uh, Google DeepMind, for example, and others. And we use that insight and innovation to bring in disruptive products to market, particularly around more logistics and mobility. Uh, there are ways for the supply chain to be uh, improved with machine learning, and we are bringing this to customers uh, worldwide with uh, you know uh, AI talent, African AI talent base. Now, the, the origins of your company Tunisia, is that correct? Exactly, yes. Uh, but you have also now an office in London and the US as well, is that correct? Or so uh, we're present in five countries okay. now, so it's uh, correct. We started in Tunisia, we're now headquartered in London. We also have a great team in Paris, in France. And in Africa, we're Pan-African, so we're present in Nigeria, Kenya and Tunisia and soon hopefully new countries as well. Okay, now one of my passions has been to get greater uh, integration in the community between industry event like this yes. and an academic event like the Deep Learning in Darbo, for example. And I, I think both communities have their place, but I think where those two communities overlap, some interesting opportunities there maybe for entrepreneurs to see what's going on in the world of business and, and also students. So what, what advice would you give to a, a young entrepreneur right now who's thinking, okay, I've been to a show, I've been to Deep Learning in Darbo, come to AI Expo, what, what, what's the next step for a guy with a la or a girl with a laptop? What, what, would, what, would you, what three things yeah. would you say to I, them? I think it's interesting because indeed, like when you look at InstaDeep, we have a step in research and we have another step where we're delivering real products for the real world. At the end of the day, we're a bootstrap, so we have to deliver and like exceed the expectations of our customers. So what I would say today is, if you are interested in entrepreneurship and you have a sense of, hey, machine learning is interesting, there are lots of breakthroughs happening, things like that, pick up a problem on which you have very good knowledge. So it could be that, you know, I don't know, you have some expertise in agriculture or in biotechnology or you're a fan of robotics. The magic mix and when you bring in competence in machine learning with a specific domain expertise, in a sense, pick up an opportunity where you can be the best in the world at what you do. And in Africa, we have many of those which are uh, yet unexplored, so I believe the potential is there. And what has changed today is that, you know, funding is available, mm -hmm. cloud compute is available. So it's just a matter of believing in yourself and getting ahead. And in terms of the sort of sectors, I mean, I, I, look, AI, machine learning, deep learning, uh, data science goes across every industry. We, we, we know that. But are you seeing any particular hot 
industries right now or hot problems that people could start to think about? I mean, just, just from your own experience? I mean, there is a lot going on. So I believe the set of problems to be solved in Africa is very high. Uh, I mean, classically, uh, financial inclusion has been explored a lot, but there are other opportunities in agriculture, for example, and in digitizing the real world. With uh, you know, modern machine learning being able to run on a simple smartphone or a simple camera and chip that costs less than $100, you can actually digitize the real world and extract insights with machine learning. So the scope of problems is very large. If I had to be uh, specific about what I believe are the two most promising uh, industries for machine learning going forward, I would say biotech. We are at a point where genome sequencing now getting very cheap, but we need machine learning to interpret and ultimately brings in like the cures of tomorrow. And that's one area. And of course, robotics. We are at a you know, soon to be golden age of robotics because uh, like hardware systems are going to soon merge with smart software from machine learning and AI. And the results will change the world. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, I, I've seen been some amazing talks. Uh, you know, Simon C from NVIDIA is here. I mean, he, as a global thought leader, I mean, driving global AI R&D for NVIDIA. Wow. And his vision of, about what, you know, like if we look at the, the East, you know, Singapore, South Korea, China, um, you know, how, how they see AI as a force for good. It has the potential to help humankind and thinking much further into the future. What, what, what do you think we should be thinking in terms of the future for, for Africa? I mean, you mentioned some key areas there, but, you know, should we have a much bigger, ambitious vision for AI, do you think, in our region? I think uh, maybe a point that somebody, uh, people don't realize. We tend to think about AI as being this uh, competition between the United States and China, yeah, very like much the so. developed world. But the reality is that for the developing world, for Africa, it's even a more of an existential uh, issue because classical uh, models around selling resources or cheap labor are going to disappear. Like in the past, for example, China itself started with uh, cheap labor and going up the economic ladder. That's right. Soon that will not be possible. So what we need to do is embrace the uh, fourth industrial revolution, basically machine learning and AI, because we literally do not have a choice. So at the same time this is the best opportunity that we have seen here in Africa because uh, startups like InstaDeep, like Cortex, like others are actually proving that you can get going, you can deliver competitive products, you can be world class and so uh, there is a hope that uh, Africa can leapfrog and find its uh, rightful place uh, among the, you know, the different uh, you know, continents and eco like world ecosystems and that is the opportunity that we have in front of us but we should seize it and uh, a lot of what we do uh, is geared towards that. Um, actually, pleased to see that AI Expo is getting such uh, traction with high-quality companies and others. This is a time of action. That's my yeah, message. definitely. Yeah. And obviously, you've come from the deep learning in Daba. I think last week. Is that right? Exactly. We were in Kenya last. That's week, right. Last and week. it's fantastic uh, to to see another edition of, of your show. Fortunately, I couldn't come to it. Um, but I mean, what were next time you're invited? Yeah, thank you it very much. It will be in Tunisia <laughs> in 2020. Uh, I'm actually uh, organizing it well, uh, with and, my team. And the date? Uh, so probably it will be this time next year, September. And we would be very happy to have uh, you <laughs> present. <laughs> we just make sure there's no clash, right? We'll we'll talk about that offline. Exactly. But, um, what? I mean, I missed the event last week. What What were the top three things from the deep learning in Derby this year? What, what What did you see? What trends were emerging? Trends that were emerging first, uh, we're very happy to see uh, basically some of the best companies in the world uh, taking uh, coming to Indama mm -hmm. physically so we've had participation from IBM from Apple Facebook Google DeepMind even Salesforce the head of yeah. AI at Salesforce Richard Socher made the whole trip from Silicon Valley which is pretty far That's great. just to be with us so uh, definitely there is awareness that Indaba is that hub of talent uh, the best hub of talent in, uh, in the continent mm. so that was point number one point number two Definitely a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of passion, a lot of interest, more countries being represented. And point number three, we are very excited to see actually original high quality research starting to emerge. So uh, among the many roles I have as a member of the steering committee, I'm also a poster, a poster judge and I'm right. impressed by the quality of the, the, the papers, the research papers, the posters that are being presented. Quality is definitely going higher every year and uh, we're going to soon have truly 
world-class uh, innovation and research from Africa. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny you mentioned the posters. I mean, I, I, I did my PhD in chemistry a long time ago. I had, I had hair then. And um, I, I, at, the, at the Deep Learning in Darba X in uh, Durban uh, earlier this year, they had a poster session, and I'd forgotten the excitement of the poster wall, uh, the poster sessions. It's, it's actually really nice to see young students presenting their work. And, and we incorporated that in, in this show as well. So uh, we've got very applied research. And there was a, a gentleman from Nelson Mandela University who's developed a drone technology for inspecting photovoltaic cells. Excellent. So in, in a solar farm, right? And I, I just thought, you know, there is this innovation going on now, origi as you say, original innovation going on, and that could be a business, right? Straight away. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the number of startup ideas, you know, I could list you with like five or ten. Like, yeah. And most of them have this in common. They are all about extracting information and digitizing information from the real world. Historically, uh, Africa was maybe uh, not as advanced as other areas when it comes to data assets. But that's not an excuse anymore. With modern machine learning being able to run on a phone or a, on a small and cheap system without internet, sometimes even without electricity, just on a battery for a year, that opens up the opportunity to digitize Africa's information. And Africa's real world information is gigantic. It's just a matter of yeah. uh, getting extracting it getting the insights and I'm sure we could have like world-class companies uh, we already have some like aerobotics for example is a South African company using drones and uh, AI you know visual AI to uh, estimate uh, crop yields in, uh, in right. agriculture like uh, field, fields so we could have lots more lot more like these and all what it takes is curiosity and I would say having the mentality that this can be done it's not because you're just starting that 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 it means that the opportunity is not there. After all, when you look at, you know, for example, Elon Musk, who's from South Africa, and Tesla, in 2012, Tesla had a thousand cars on the road uh, versus millions for large uh, car makers. Today, Tesla has the best data asset in the world. Why? Because from the beginning, they had this notion of extracting information from the real world and making it useful. And so with an AI-first mentality, I believe the continent has an incredible opportunity to succeed. Yeah, AI first mentality. I think that's a fantastic way to end this uh, conversation. Karim, many, many thanks for joining us. Thanks a and lot. Thank you for sharing your insights. It's Pleasure great to, to be uh, here. Yeah. talk to not only uh, 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 an innovator in this space, but also an entrepreneur. And uh, thanks, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.